you guys ever do what I'm about to do on Friday? I call it Call of Duty Syndrome. It happens to me once a year. I actually think I just talked about this literally on Monday in Madden Monday. But Call of Duty comes out, and I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna play it for a week, and then I'm never ever gonna touch the game again. Every single year it's the same thing, man. The games haven't been good in like five, six years now. I get it, I play it, I hate it, I never touch it again, I don't play it for the entire year, and then it repeats. I think part of the reason is because I keep thinking that like, oh, I'm just gonna get back into it like I did when I was, you know, in eighth grade. But no, that won't happen because the games will never go back to how they were. There's a billion attachments now. The maps are all confusing. You can have 400 perks on your guy. There's battle passes, microtransactions. It sucks. Am I alone or do a lot of you guys do that too? And I mean, it could be any game. It doesn't just have to be Call of Duty. I'm just talking in the sense that you buy a game that you know you are going to hate. All right, what is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Happy Thursday. Today we're gonna be kind of going back into the power rankings, although I'm gonna alter it a little bit. I'm just gonna call this the power 15. So we haven't done my power rankings in like two weeks. I gave it a break last week, kind of for this reason. So everything could get shaken up because it is very shaken up. But I also wanted to try and introduce more teams than 10. So today we're gonna be doing 15. With that being said, I'm going to try and keep them crisp and fluent, meaning I don't want to drag on to one team for too long. I'm going to keep them moving at a good pace. Not too quick, but enough where you guys understand what I'm saying, hopefully. One quick thing before the video starts, guys. Head over to gfuel.com, use code Wyatt's World, save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products. So, coming in at number 15, we've got the Chargers. Look, I know I had them in the top 10 not that long ago, but they've gotten spanked twice now. One was a blowout, one was a lesson being taught by the master himself, Bill Belichick. They need to bounce back. I know they can. I think they're going to beat the Eagles. And LA fans, please do not think that Justin's in the middle of some midlife crisis regression right now. This is called a slump. It happens to everybody. He will be back. Moving on to number 14, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. Horrid loss, and I mean wretched, but they will recover. Look at Tennessee. They lost to the Jets. They haven't lost since. They've actually been playing the best ball of their life, you know, other than Derrick Henry getting hurt. I think the Bengals will beat Cleveland this week. I think they will reground themselves. I think that this is a very, very, I don't think, I know that this is a very, very good team, but with young teams, you're going to get what you got going on now. They need to play to learn. It's called adapting. There is nothing you can do about it. Bengals at 14. All right, moving on to number 13, we've got us the Patriots. Like I said in yesterday's prediction video, Bill has something. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, and I don't think the people of New England will even disagree with me considering I'm a Bills fan. It's a bland team. The Patriots are not flashy. They're not going to be making big, obnoxious trick plays or taking any stupid risks or shit like that. This is a team that shows up to do one thing and one thing only, and that is win. Bill Belichick knows what's successful. He knows what's going to work. And he can work with just about anybody, and I actually think he might have a fucking monster with Mac Jones. This team was supposed to be bad, not playoff contenders. Did you know they have 10 interceptions? Moving on to number 12, we've got the Chiefs. Hey! Way to beat the Giants! You guys did it! You rock! More importantly, way to not give up 20 points for the second straight week. Now that is actually good. I mean, it's good you beat the Giants, but this team, to me at least, it's still not top 10. Now, this week would have been a lot more interesting if they were to go out and beat Aaron Rodgers. Unfortunately, that won't be the case, but if they can still beat the Packers, it's going to matter in a very significant way. So if they can do that, they can go out there and knock off Matt LaFour. I will strongly reconsider my harsh words for him, but right now the Chiefs are still ass. Moving on to number 11, give me the Steelers. Here they come. I knew it was going to happen. I fucking knew it was going to happen eventually. It always does. It never doesn't happen. It's Mike Tomlin. And unfortunately, this really, really sucks for Cleveland. Tomlin's not a loser. And as much as I want to say that the Steelers are, they're just not. Their defense is looking good. Their offense is functioning to what it needs to be. And their team has won the last three games. Cleveland, you guys got about two weeks to figure something out. Otherwise, I would consider just packing your bags and going the fuck home. That division is the wrong division to be sitting in when you're trying to figure it out. Moving on, we got number 10. I'm going to give them credit to Oakland, not Oakland, Vegas Raiders. Oakland, Jesus, fuck, it's been a year and a half. They haven't played in a few weeks. They just had their bye, but they are a good team. And I need to put them in the top 10. They were fighting with like 11 and 12, but they're sitting at the top of their division 5 and 2. 
This is another team that is constantly overcoming obstacles. First you got a new coach, now you just lost your first round draft pick last year. But you know what? They're still going to be good. The team is not the best team and it's not 100% complete, but they are solid. And they're not going to make a game easy for anyone. It's time to credit Derek Carr, people. I hate to repeat myself and sound like a broken record, but he is a goddamn good quarterback. He is very good. All right, up next we got number nine. This is a team I didn't think would even nearly scrape the top 10 this year, but it's the New Orleans Saints. Looking good, but looking so bad. Injuries have and they continue to absolutely fucking blast this roster, yet they still get it done. Told you that game against the Bucks was going to be interesting. Now, I didn't think that the Saints were going to win, but they did. And they're standing tall in what has kind of turned into be a pretty competitive division. I know they just lost Jameis, but unfortunately their coach is too good. Sean Payton will keep him in check. Hate that son of a bitch. All right, moving on to number eight. We've got the Baltimore Ravens. Again, it's been a while. They haven't played in a couple weeks. And the last time they played, they got the shit beaten out of them. But they're a top 10 team to me still. Hopefully this bye week gives them all an opportunity to get the rest that they need. It also should have given their secondary an extra week to really give themselves a break and re-understand just what the fuck it is that they're supposed to be doing. That's like the biggest thing in Baltimore. I know Lamar carrying the offense in every other game is a worrisome thing for me too, but their defense needs to be there. However, I will say this, they're playing the Minnesota Vikings this week, and statistically, from my knowledge at least, the Vikings versus mobile quarterbacks, it goes over about as well as it would if I tried to truck Aaron Donald. Man, every single time Minnesota plays a mobile quarterback, they get the brakes beaten off of them. I don't have a doubt in my mind that Lamar is going to shred them. Moving on to number seven, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Never ever good to take a loss to a division rival. However, this is a movie I've seen the ending to probably more times than I can actually fucking count. Tom loses badly, people make fun of Tom, then Tom comes back the following week and absolutely murders whatever team he's playing. The Bucks are going to be back. There's not a doubt in my mind. There is room for concern on that team. They do have holes everywhere on that defense. Secondary, I should say. But it's not going to be enough to stop that offense when they come back from a loss like that. That is not a team you want to piss off. And let me tell you something. They are angry. And moving on to number six, we've got the Titans. I'm giving them respect. They have done their job with or without Henry, and they will continue to. My big thing when they beat the Bills, why I didn't put them in the top 10, was because Derrick Henry was responsible for basically all their success. At least that's how I saw it this year. But what's important for the game against the Colts is that the defense was able to come up in big spots. And if they're going to be able to continue to do that, it's only going to give Ryan Tannehill more opportunities to score. If you guys haven't noticed, that guy can fucking run too. Now he's not a Josh, he's not a Lamar or anything of that caliber, but he's a big physical guy who they're not scared to use at the goal line. They're gonna suck without their titan of a running back, but even without him, that offense is still terrifying. Adrian Peterson season, baby! Okay, moving on to number five. We've got the Cardinals. They blew it. They had so many advantages and they fucking blew it. Look, I still think this team is going to be great. I still think Cliff is doing well. He can't control miscommunications between a quarterback and a receiver. But they're going to need to bounce back really bad from that. Like, it would have been one thing to lose to Rodgers and Adams and all that, but you lost to Aaron Rodgers with nobody besides Randall fucking Cobb. They didn't have Lazard, they didn't have Adams, Tanya and Torres ACL during that game. You guys still got your asses absolutely beat. Rough loss, Cardinals, you're still good, but you gotta come back. Moving on to number four, we've got the Clown Boys. Still one without Dak in Minnesota in U.S. Bank. This team is very, very good and they have a lot of depth. Literally one of the only teams where like every number one can get hurt and they're still going to be okay. What's even more impressive is their defense was able to come in and shut down a high functioning offense in their own house like the Vikings. But it also leads me to believe that if Dak would have been playing in that game in the first place, it would have been an absolute fucking blowout. Nothing would have changed besides the Dallas Cowboys would have been a lot better. Moving on to number three, we've got the Rams. They were already elite, they just got better. They got Von Miller. Defense is going to be a scary world for anybody living in it on any given week. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to play that defense. They're 7-1, tied with the Cardinals. It's going to be a bloodbath for the rest of the year. Now, the Los Angeles Rams did just lose Deshaun Jackson, which is sad. But if I'm being honest, that's not going to hurt them in the slightest, and I don't even think they're going to realize he's gone. 
All right, and number two, we got the Buffalo Bills. I'm not going to drop them, and maybe it's because I like them. They're my favorite team, and I'm going to defend my boys. But I still think they're one of the best teams in football, man. Yes, it sucked. It was not good to see their offense struggle against the Dolphins for half a game. That wasn't fun. But its defense did the job, and it gave Josh time to slap the offense in shape. I even went over it in my Tuesday's video. I do think that they have the best roster. I don't know if it's the highest functioning roster. There's obviously one team above them. But I'm obsessed with the fact I don't like to bring this up often because I take losses when I get them, I'm a man about it, but the Bills are a goal line stand away from being 6-1. and one. The Titans beat us, though. They, they beat us. Bills at number two. And last but not least, number one, Green Bay Packers, go Pack Go. How this team's functioning right now, I think they're at the top. I can't count them out when they just went and snapped a streak at all the disadvantages they ran into. However, this week is going to be the ultimate test because we've always wanted to see what LaFleur could do without Aaron Rodgers. And if you didn't hear yet, he has COVID, so we're going to find out. Since week one, the Green Bay Packers have bullied and battered every team they've faced. And it doesn't matter if they are at half mass or if they're at full steam. You play the Packers, I can only guarantee about one outcome, and that's going to be you losing. They've got a coach, they've got depth, they're really going to need it, so let's find out what it can do. Green Bay, well, I guess Aaron Rodgers has always had my respect, but I'll give it to the full team here this one time. Green Bay is currently sitting 7-1, and one, and I have at the top of the league. Alright guys, and that is going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, you already know what to do. Comment, like, subscribe, turn the bell on. I do my best to post every single day. Cleveland fans, San Francisco fans, come on, let me hear it in the comment. I know you guys think you should be on here. A lot of people probably do, so let me know. I have fun with this stuff, guys, and I hope you have fun with me. I appreciate anybody who swings by and watches. If you guys want to follow me on any of my social medias or send something to my P.O. box, that info will be in the description of this video as well. With all that stuff being said, I'm going to hop off and edit this shit so you guys can watch it on time. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Thursday, and as always, I will see you in the next video.